So should we get into it and uh, Ooh, talk about uh, Uber's uh, Uber's r- response? I would call it to Professor Sherman's uh, wonderful article that ran yep. a couple of weeks ago on Monday. Then it was taken down. Then it ran again, and then um, he was on last week, and he explained why it was taken down, and it was his rookie mistake. He called it, but it's as clear as it gets. So look, you know, I mean. I'm I'm changing my mind as far as um, you know what Uber considers their take rate um, versus our take rate, meaning you know Uber is looking at this as their net revenue versus our gross take. It doesn't make sense. Well, so, well, not only that, minus their expenses. Yeah. So there, there's a couple of things here. First off, they're changing their definition of what uber's take is it used to be i mean you and i have talked about this the other day and um essentially what it used to be if you've been driving from 2016 or earlier you know or 2017 i'm sorry you know what the take rate split was either it was 90 10 when if you first started when uber uh had originally started 2014 i believe that changed to 80 20 or was 2015 um and then 2017 was uh 75 25 so basically you as a driver would either get 90 80 or 75 percent of the fare of the total fare if a passenger paid ten dollars for that fare you'd get nine dollars eight dollars or 750 depending on when you signed up on the platform and you were grandfathered into that rate so if you were at the 90 10 and somebody signed up at the 75 25 you would still make the 90 10 split but um that would be considered their take their take was they pay what what they got after that. So it was the the, the yeah. ten the one dollar the the two dollars or the two fifty. That was their take. You know, fast forward to today, they're changing what they're considering is the take rate for any normal person out there. You, me, everybody watching. Basically, as a driver, you look. What did the customer ta- pay? They paid forty five dollars. I made twenty dollars. Where the fuck is the rest of the money going? Yeah, that well, is going to Uber. I mean, look, what Uber does with the rest of it is their business. Because I honestly feel like you know this article that they their blog article that came out was in direct response to Doctor. I mean, Professor Sherman's article. Obviously, it is no coincidence that it was released on Tuesday, the day he was on our show last week. I'm going like, yeah. you know, some things are coincidental, some things are not. This was not, but um, you know, all their executives. Look, I mean, all these people should be high fiving each other running around circles with their vested stock options that that's at 62 now stock is at 62 on the backs of the drivers they're in the s p 500 they had an amazing year as a company they should be high-fiving each other as opposed to being petty going to twitter going to here going to they're still saying uber doesn't take more than 15 percent i'm going like if i was them which i'm not I'd be like running around, so you high fiving. What a wonderful year! My stock is at sixty two. I have options at ten bucks a share. That's what I would be doing. I don't know why they're wasting their time coming defending something that is almost indefensible. To be honest with you, Chris, and and you know, and they're out there. You know, they put this blog out, so we're going to kind of you know uh, break it down a little bit. They had a one of their top executives, um, you know tweet it as well and then there was i didn't get into it whatsoever because i'm like you know i knew i was going to do this do the breakdown so let's show it i mean he says you know he says driver earnings are up 30 percent since 2017 and uh this is the way they calculate the take rate according to them so the big black line people uh, this is in the uber block by the way anybody and anybody can go read this this is literally screenshots from the blog that you guys can go read it yourself and agree or disagree. So, you know, he starts with a a dig to Professor Sherman, of course, because Professor Sherman has written many, many articles, by the way. Um, And, uh, you know, one of his most famous or infamous ones has been in, it was in 2017, Chris, where he says, is Uber ever going to be profitable? Well, Mm. they've been profitable, truly profitable for the last two quarters. And, uh, and it says here, you know, literally, actually, he tweeted this. Um, you know who you are, sir. Uh, Uber achieved several important financial milestones in 2023, generating our first operating profit and billions 
in free cash flow on back of who, sir? On the back of, uh, by the way, you know, I want to mention this. I'm going to do more of those videos, people, because I was so frustrated. I apologize if you guys went and watched it. I didn't cuss at all, though, Chris. I was just, I did those two videos, bro. I was so frustrated. I turned my app off after fucking five minutes, and I was like, I can't do this. I can't do three trips out here. But anyway, so the big black line, let's get back to the subject. The big black line is what the customer paid, okay? The third third long blue line is what Uber pays out of what the customer paid um, to the drivers, including incentives and tips. And uh, then you guys can go all the way to the end. There's a tiny little sliver of uh well there's a there's a kind of a black line in the middle where i'm pointing like right in the middle where it where so uber's gross receipts or they call it you know whatever they take whatever they take out what the driver is paid out of the fare and then it's called revenue okay that's uber's revenue then uber takes out their commercial insurance then they can take out um you know, uh, running the company, obviously, 33,000 employees don't run on water. And then they go, well, our take rate is only 15%. Well, sir, you know, this is all well on set, right? I get it. I get it. But now what you pay to your employees is not my control. I have nothing to do with it. Your commercial insurance rates, you keep crying that commercial insurance rates are high. What about our insurance rates? You know, you think we're just running the car on water? What about our expenses? You think You think that our expenses have not doubled since 2019? I mean, look, I've asked this to you guys, and I'm pretty sure there are some couple of smart economists at Uber who can who can calculate this really easily. Is this is not rocket scientists for you people? How about this? How about you guys figure out from 2019 or 2018 or 2017, whenever you guys feel like it, because this is gone to 2017 when Dara took over. Why don't you guys come up? You know, go talk to the couple of economists you know at Uber and and come out with the with the hourly earnings of drivers adjusted to inflation how about that you guys want to come play that game we can play that game i mean i'm pretty sure the picture is going to be super duper ugly and uh you know they just keep arguing that our take rate is 15 percent. we don't need uh more than that to make money i'm going like yeah you do two two and a half billion trips you know i guess you don't need more than that but you know going forward chris my way of explaining take rate is going to be passenger paid 100 i kept 50 Uber kept 50, take rate 50%, period. Yep. Do you agree or disagree, partner? I agree with that one. That's the best take rate because otherwise we're getting into this game of like picking picking what we want to pick out and saying, oh, well, you know, all these operating expenses, uh, we don't touch them. Well, you know what? It's still coming out of the fare. So it's still part of your uh, what, what you're, you're actually making. So let's uh, not deal with that. Let's yeah. let's uh, let's keep it pretty simple. That's the way it used oh, to be. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Not this yeah. uh, adjustment uh, of you know this little sliver. Oh, that's what we. Get. So, but here's the thing: you're seeing billions <clears throat> in free cash flow. So, don't you think that that those billions should kind of come back to the drivers who helped get you there too? Because again, as you just said, there's a lot more expenses out there. So, if you want me to start calculating my take rate. Well, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, take out all of my expenses. I'm going to take out everything that I can there. And then I'm going to show my little driver earning. And then it's going to shrink down here to what it actually is. And then I'm going to say, oh, that's my actual take rate. So then I'll compare that to what the uh, what the passenger paid. So if you want me to say, oh, uh, Uber charged the, pa the passenger $100, I got 50 of it. But, you know, I have this expense and this expense and this expense and this expense and then brings it down to, let's say, $36. Well, then I only made 36% on that ride when everything else was going elsewhere. So would you want to yeah. play that game? I could. I mean, I, I almost I almost feel like I need to push here a little bit harder, Chris, because um, I mean, I mean, obviously they're watching and, you know, I, I, I need to push here. I mean, you guys had an amazing year. You guys had a wonderful year. Stock is, you know, as a company is $125 billion worth. I mean, look, without drivers, this wouldn't be happening. No, that's, 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 that's a little bit of uh, emotional part of this argument. But let's just go with, with, with reality. You know, why are you guys playing the victim here? Oh, our commercial rates are so high. We can If the rules, people, as TNCs, you need to provide P2, P3, or P1 insurance, commercial insurance, period. Not my problem. 
What do you think my insurance, what do you think happened to my insurance rates? Just regular driving insurance rates over the last three years. You think they just went down? No, it went up as much or more than your commercial insurance rates. I got my bill the other day. I mean, it's outrageous, right? So so I think, you know, this this victim thing, like, oh, we're the victim here. Like, no, no, you're not the victim. You're a profitable company, as you should be. You're doing two and a half billion trips. You should take a victory lap as opposed to doing this this little uh, back and forth thing on this 15%. You guys are somehow stuck on this. So next uh, slide, Chris. Yeah, so, you know, on this one, Uber says that, uh, you know, their um, fares per per year have not, because they're always going back to 2017, by the way, because, uh, well, Dara got hired in 2017. So, um, you know, um, I would also urge everybody to go look, read Uber's earnings report, right? Um, their global take rate is 29% and then take 8% out for their UK numbers adjustment. <laughs> it's down to 21%. So I'm just not understanding this. If US, first of all, the article was about US. You guys keep talking about global, okay? Um, you know, as big as you are, I know you don't have a, a responsibility or or you don't need to break this down. I personally believe Uber is extremely profitable in the US. And I think Uber's mobility business, which is the ride share business, is extremely profitable, especially since upfront fare showed up, okay? So... My thing is, I think they're carrying the rest of the world. So if the global take rate being 21%, that means U.S. take rates are much, much higher than 15%. Otherwise, it wouldn't be. Because I, you know, Europe, I mean, their European take rates cannot be higher because they have a lot of regulatory scrutiny out there. A lot of, you know, drivers are being, such as England, you know, that's lowered their take rate from 29 to 21 because they, uh, you know, their, their accounting methods, were, they were forced to change their accounting methods. So... I believe U.S. take rates are a lot higher, and then they're just kind of hiding behind it because I cannot believe that in Brazil their take rates are a lot higher than the U.S. How do I get to a global take rate of 21%? How about this, Uber? You guys have the numbers. Why don't you? Okay, forget the city by city, region by region. We're going to talk about that on the first week uh, of New Year's. Um, how about this? Why don't you just break it down? U.S., Canada, South America, just region by region, your take rates. Because all you guys do is... Put everything in one basket and say our global take rate is 29%. Take out 8% for UK is 21%. Okay. So why can't you break it down? I mean, you don't have to, obviously, because the rules say that you don't have to. Next screenshot. All right. So um, so it says, looking at the US, when drivers compare the total amount a rider paid against the total amount that they receive, they will see that Uber's take is higher than the global average. Oh, I just said that. Okay. But this difference is driven by higher third-party fees and more acutely by the cost of commercial auto insurance. Yeah, you're just crying, you know, boo-hoo-hoo here. Um, okay, well, sir, if you're going to talk about your commercial auto insurance, talk about my costs as well a little bit. That's why I'm suggesting a couple of economists break the numbers down and come up with um what uh, driver earnings look like since 2017 adjusted to inflation all 50 states require that ride share drivers have high value okay we know that that's your that's the rules that you have to play under so don't complain about it and u.s insurance industry is in crisis i agree actually on that one because my insurance rate are through the roof as well and he says it right here skyrocketing for everyone from home to personal auto insurance no shit i agree so but that's that's your business. You you need to run your business the way the rules and laws are set. So next screenshot. And this is this is where you know this is where <laughs> things are separating a little bit. And and I'm like, um, uh, Uber. It says Uber has made the decision to pass some of these growing costs to riders and not drivers. Well, um, I disagree, though it increased booking fee for each trip that booking fee is going to kill you uber because the booking fee is is according to uber the all of the booking fee that you guys can see is commercial insurance okay i'm not buying it but uh we're gonna have to uh, come to some sort of conclusion on that um but as with the global take rate um the service fee that drivers pay to uber has remained relatively unchanged uh disagree so again, with prices going up, at least they're agreeing that the prices on the retail end have gone up. Um, the share going to drivers versus Uber's true bottom line. See, 
That's Seaworth says, Chris, true bottom line. I'm mm -hmm. not interested in your true bottom line. You can do whatever you want with the money you're taking out of that trip. Um, share going to drivers versus the true bottom line after insurance costs is largely the same. We we'll disagree. So, in fact, um, in fact, if you were to subtract all of these insurance, again, they're stuck with the insurance costs from Uber Mobility Revenue, you would be left well under 20% of the total fare. Okay. Your CEO keeps going around talking 15%. He's on the record talking with, to Kara Swisher, Kara Swisher, who's an um, amazing you know, journalist. He keeps saying 15%. You're saying 20%. Your earnings say 29%, less than 8%. It's so convoluted. Just make it simple, okay? We're saying it's a lot higher than that. So you know, at some point, we will have to come to some sort of uh, agreement because the numbers don't lie. You can move the numbers around column to column, but numbers don't lie. So in the U.S., median driver earnings per utilized hour, including tips and incentives, have grown nearly 30% over the last six years, faster than inflation. All right. Now, this is a chart that um, I looked at carefully, right? So since Darrow came into play, uh, which is the left quarter uh, one of 2017, um, Uber earnings per active hour, by the way, active hour, um, have gone up 30% according to Uber, okay? Now, you guys agree with it, disagree with it. I'm sure they have the data. Their data is reasonably solid. Um, but what I'm, what my concern is, and, and I guarantee this, so whoever's watching at Uber, I guarantee it on the next time Mr. Kosher Shah is doing a CNBC interview or some sort of interview, that last number he was putting out there, 32 per active hour, is going to be a lot lower. I will take a bet on that with anybody at Uber, okay? I will take a bet on it any, 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 whatever you guys want. I'll take that bet, the other side of the bet. It has to be lower because this does not include the Q4 disaster incentives that's, that's going directly to your bottom line. So, but I will take that bet that the next time he mentions drivers are making whatever active hour according to Uber is going to be less than 32. And uh, so the way I look at it is this one, Chris. Just put up that next one that I drew a line. Do you have the one with the same chart? Um, no. Oh, you don't have that one? Okay. Just yep. go back to the next one. Go back to the last one. Okay. So if you guys look at this, um, Uber earnings from, I mean, driver active hour earnings from 2017 to 2023 to, to today, basically, according to Uber, are up 30% under Dara Koshoshai. Um, you know, we, the, the whole active hour discussion is something completely different. We can spend time on it. Um, you know, some people calculated with the active hours that they're on the road. Some people calculated, you know, different matrix for different folks. You can skin a cat a million different ways when it comes to earnings. But the way I'm looking at this chart is that actually I give him credit that they put up a chart that shows earnings peaking nine quarters ago. Nine. Okay. That's two years and one month ago. and Earnings declining. That's the way I'm looking at this chart. I mean, I see going back to 2017, earnings are up 30%. The way I'm looking at it is earnings are down actually 16% on the last nine quarters. That's the way I'm looking at this chart. I don't know who else is looking at what. I'm living day to day. I'm looking at the last nine quarters versus what was happening in 2017. And I'm in adjusted the inflation. Them saying earnings are up 30% is also bogus. You know, come up with it. Come with it. Come with it. Uh, Uber come with uh, driver earnings, active hour earnings, including tips, which are not guaranteed, and incentives, which we know they're variable, and you guys just absolutely demolish those incentives. So it's in your control. So I don't even know why tips and incentives should be in there, but let's say they are. You know, I put up a video the other day uh, sitting in the car with my Uber Eats on and Lyft on, and this is the disrespect that we get that when it comes to active hours. I ran the damn thing for six minutes, Chris. I got one single Lyft offer, and I did not get any Uber Eats offer. I had Uber Eats on and Lyft rideshare on at the same time. This is the problem with active hours, Uber and Lyft, if you guys are watching this, is that with utilization rate down to 60% in LA, okay? Six, meaning 60% 60 of that 60 minutes, I have a passenger in the car or on my way to the passenger. That 32 doesn't look the right to me, okay? The way it looks is at 60% utilization, that looks more like 18 gross before expenses. And we're going to prove that because you guys next week, we're going to talk about it. Um, our community is so great that they sent me screenshots from, from Uber, not ours, screenshots going from Uber to drivers on 
online hour earnings. I mean, some cities are down to $17 an hour. Well, that's gross, by the way. So take the five to seven dollars an hour for the car to run. You know, we're down to ten bucks. Um, but uh, yeah, last the way I look at this chart is last nine quarters earnings are down sixteen um, percent, and it's going to be lower on the next the next time this chart is put up. And then if we look at it on the next screenshot, um, and then um, look, this is the stock of Uber stock bottomed. As far as I'm concerned, exactly when upfront fare showed up. When Upfront Fair showed up towards the middle of 2022, it showed up in LA third quarter of 2022. Stock was 21. Today's stock is 62, a triple. Um, I, I think there is a massive, massive correlation between um, the stock performance, their profitability, and Upfront Fairs. And, uh, you know, look, again, whoever you are watching at Uber, you guys should be high-fiving each other. Um, running laps around the office and saying we had an amazing year on the backs of the drivers and uh, we're a $125 billion company. We're part of the S&P 500 and our stock options are all in the money. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Life is beautiful at Uberland. Um, not so much on the driver land. And yeah, so I'm going to go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that was a good breakdown. Uh, but you know what? Here's the thing. We, we talked about the article from Len um, the first week. Then we had Len on the following week. Uber, we broke down your article now. Uh, we invite somebody from Uber on to talk about this and uh, share their thoughts a little bit more, um, put it more in perspective. And, you know, let's let's see how uh, how you can sell some uh, catch, uh, catch a popsicle to a woman wearing white gloves uh, and go from there. <laughs> yeah, anybody. Anybody who's willing to come up. And we're going to have a civil discussion about numbers. You know, we can put numbers any way we like. Um, I'm talking the reality out there, Chris. I mean, you know, I was out there. I got disgusted. And, you, you know, people were like, they had like a thousand comments on that one video I put up a couple of days ago. I ran my uh, I ran my Uber app for five minutes. I was so disgusted. I just turned it off. It was in the city. I was getting like 20 minute trips for five bucks, bro. I'm in LA. 20, trip, 20 minute trips for $5. If I'm going to make five dollars every 20 minutes i'm just not gonna do it I, I will decline a fucking thousand of these before i take one of those i mean i'm a, unless i'm just in a rental i'm taking everything i'm depending on prop 22 top off yeah well if that's where the business is at not a feasible situation for me so um yeah that's it yeah and you know it doesn't help that there's even more drivers on the platform which means your utilization rate drops even more so i mean take a look at when they were peaking at 2021 the incentives were off the wall like the amount that you could get i think i mean people were posting they could get hundreds of dollars like four or five hundred dollars you know every couple of days when it came to these incentives because they were trying to get drivers yeah. back onto the platform so they were yeah. just incentivizing everybody up the ass and same thing with you know the surge the surge was high um everything was going good at that point that's why drivers were making so much but fast forward today you know just again last quarter you gain a million and a half new drivers worldwide. That just means if your rides are still coming into the same, you're going to be sitting there longer between rides. So that active hour can become useless to certain drivers because, I mean, you know, if they're sitting there 30 to 35 to 40% of the time without a ride or a request coming in, you know, yeah. that's all downtime. They're still on, they're still waiting for a ride to come in. And for the most part, I don't, I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I count when I turn my app on to when I turn it off when I'm driving, basically from driveway to driveway and everything in between, I consider is time that I'm online and active. And whether I have a ride or not, you know, that's going to dictate what I'm actually taking home. So, you know, if I have a ride back to back to back to back that I'm taking uh, versus, you know, sitting there for 20 minutes out of the hour uh, for hour one, 22 minutes for hour two, um, you know, those types of things, that's really going to cut into how much money we're making and taking home at the end of the day as well, too. Yeah, I'm going to definitely do that, too, by the way. Um, you know, uh, when I'm tested negative, uh, I'm going to get in the car and accept, like, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 trips in a row. But as long as it's not taking me to the Mexican border, um, I'm going to do it. Let's see what let's see what my profitability looks like, because that's what Uber wants. You got to take everything and keep moving on. And, you know, if I take everything and keep taking, keep taking, you know, um, I still don't think I'm going to break 32 per active hour. Um, and if I cherry pick, I don't think I'm going to break 32 per active hour. I mean, I can try. I will try. But 
Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a fallacy. I mean, it, when there's so much oversaturation, Chris, that active hour numbers are way overinflated as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, again, Uber, I take a bet from any of you. Next time, Dara says 32 per active hour, that number is going to be lower. It's going to be like 29, 28, 29 per active hour. And it's been gradually coming down from 39. So, yeah. Um, yep. Well, and then uh, those screenshots that we're seeing when it comes to everybody sending them in too, where they're they're actually oh calculating the hourly rate versus the active hour, you're seeing them start to drop. So, uh, yeah, it just shows shows you yeah, there. Uh, it's tough. Yeah. So, the, you know, the, the one thing that I can say to, to drivers, I mean, if you're in a market that's doing well, more power to you. Get out there, work a little bit more. So when, you know, slow times happen, it doesn't hurt as much and you kind of soften that blow. But for all the other drivers that are out there that are, you know, still continuing trying to push out there, you know, look at different apps, look at different possibilities, opportunities that are out there that are within your market. Um, maybe if you're just doing rideshare, maybe look at food delivery to, to kind of try to get that yeah. utilization rate higher. Because um, that's really what it comes down to for us is you want to be on the road with an order or with a rider in your car, because that's pretty much the only time that you're really out there making the money. So you want to make sure you're on different apps, being able to uh, take advantage of the potential offers that could come in on multiple platforms. So find out what is available in your area. Uh, if you're just, again, just somebody who is driving rideshare and you don't want to do food delivery, like that's me. I don't really want to do food delivery, but you know, sometimes I might have to look at that or you might have to look at that just to continue uh, making where you want to make and be utilizing the amount of time with an order in the car versus just sitting there waiting for a ride that may not look good for you. And, you know, you might have to wait another 10, 15 minutes. So there's there's a lot of things out there. But again, just open yourself up to more more opportunities and possibilities. Um, you know, it's just the ebbs and flows when it comes to ride share, when it comes to food delivery, when it comes to the gig economy. Yeah. So we've seen things go up. We've things, seen things go down and we got to continue uh, adjusting and you know, kind of seeing what we can do to fix that. Yeah, uh, I will do that. Yeah, I take the advice of those two. You know, I'll definitely zero out my odometer. And, uh, you know, as long as it's like keeping me in an area that I'm okay with, I'll keep taking it, keep taking trip after trip. Let's see where my active hour is going to fall. Um, because according to them, 32 active hours nationwide, Chris, nationwide per driver. No, like not top 20 markets not um you know between certain hours but those screenshots by the way um people the one that you sent me i mean literally chris after that show that when we put up those screenshots i have enough info now for probably 25 cities i had like hundreds of hundreds of emails um and now you i can you can build a picture right and the last one i got actually was today somebody from austin is down to 17. and i made sure i checked with uber they said uh it's not active hour. I sure hope I go. It's not active hour. Um, so seventeen online hour. So where is the thirty-two? You know, you know how that numbers don't lie, Chris. If you're mm -hmm. running at sixty percent utilization rate, seventeen online is actually thirty-two. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, which one is it for you people? You guys count seventeen online hours that you made and take your expenses out of that, or you want to count your thirty-two per active hour, as Uber says, and take your expenses out of that. As far as I'm concerned, what Chris is doing the most honorable and right thing to do, door to door, but that's a little tough. But once you accept your first ride, once you turn your app on, online hour doesn't lie. I look at online hour. I was out there, you know, I was out there. I wasn't like, you know, doing something else. But yeah, so, you know. Keep oh, no, no, no. I mean, when I say door to door, I mean like when I leave my house <laughs> to when I get back. That's what I mean. Um, because that's the time that I'm putting towards driving that's the time i'm putting towards doing something so you know yeah. that's the time that i want to be out there making money and that's how i count it so um yeah there, there's i mean that's the whole thing a lot of people count it differently but that's how i do it yeah i mean you know uh, obviously professor killer is here arguing with everybody because he has to be right at the at the end you know his way is the highway or no way i mean it doesn't make any sense he's just he's just kind of blah 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 but Actually, I have a behind the wheel with with him on the on the channel. You guys can go watch it. Um, you know, his 77 active, by the way, I have the numbers. He's 77 active. He was active for 15 hours, Chris, and he was online for 65. And he made $1,050. How much money do you think he made? $16 an hour or $77 an hour? 
a decent amount. <laughs> well, he made a thousand fifty on fifteen hours active, right? But he was mm -hmm. online for sixty five. So that'll so change. His utilization rate is down to twenty percent. Yep, and his online changed. hours, his online hours is sixteen seventeen, and his uh, you know active hours is seventy seven. Which one do you want to take? Um, I, I think online hours is the way I go with it. But yep. uh, that's what I would do too. Yep. So that's it. All right. So if you got any more questions or want to read that article that Uber put out, again, link's going to be in the description. You can also check out the Forbes article that was the response to Uber. Uh, or, I mean, that was preemptive of Uber's response. And, you know, there was that whole hoopla there. Uh, but again, if uh, anybody at Uber is watching and you want to come on and talk a little bit more about the article that you put in rebuttal of uh, Len Sherman's article, then come on and we'll definitely have you on. So you can kind of give that voice too. We want to have a fair and balanced uh, voice when it comes down to that. So uh, we definitely invite somebody from Uber. Uh, Andrew, if you're watching, uh, because I saw you're the one who had a lot to say over on X. Uh, so if you're watching, we invite you uh, specifically. But, you know, if there's somebody else who is just as passionate or just as high within the company, uh, we will we'll gladly have you on as well, too. Definitely. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.